Well, hello there. I'm Diogo and I'm writing a testing course and today I decided to share with you just a slice of the syllabus. So the lesson for today will be about mnemonics. This is the structure of this talk. So I'll start by giving the definition of what a mnemonic is. Then I'll give you some examples of how you can use different mnemonics in different situations at work. And at the end, if you're interested, I'll leave a link where you can see other examples of mnemonics in different situations. So let's start with the definition of what a mnemonic is. A mnemonic is basically a memory shortcut because it helps you retrieve some kind of information without requiring as much effort. The way it works is you take the whole information that you want to remember and then you reduce it into some kind of trigger words and that's the, the words or the tip that you use to recall the rest of the information. So that's why we say it's a shortcut. So a quick example uh, of a mnemonic that I learned at school, still as a kid, was how to figure out how many days there are in a month. So you don't have to memorize it, you can just use the knuckles in your hands. So if it's a mountain, it's 31 days. If it's a valley, then it's 30 days or 28 if it's February. So as you can see, this is just a practical and really simple example of how a mnemonic acts as a shortcut for you to get the information that you're looking for. But now let's see examples of how you can apply them at work. Let's assume that you are a product owner and you're doing behavior-driven development, uh, BDD, or specification by example, and you have this new feature and you want to describe it into scenarios. To avoid forgetting any important aspect of describing a scenario, you can use this mnemonic called oopsie, which will act as a trigger word for you to recall all those aspects. So let's start with the first one. The O stands for outcomes, and this is what you want to achieve with the feature. This is the popular sentence as a user, I want to A so that I can B and B is the outcome. So you will start with some kind of input, then we will have a process or a task that will take in that input, do some work, um, probably according to some business rules, and at the end, you will get some outputs. And then you just describe enough examples or scenarios of these inputs and outputs to fully describe the behavior that you want implemented in the process. So as you can see, this is how most mnemonics work. You have these five words with information that you want to memorize or that you are looking for. And then you take some small piece of information from each one. In this case, it's the first letter of each one. And then you try to rearrange them in a way that it makes it easier for you to remember that information. So in this case, instead of having to memorize the five words, you have this trigger word called oopsie. And that's what you use for you to recall the rest of the information. If you have a really bad memory, like I do, then you don't even have to memorize the other five words because you can just use this uh, mnemonic as the keyword for your search. So now let's say that you have this information stored in your notes in a digital format. You can now use this oopsie keyword to exactly find the information that you're looking for. And you have that whole information written down in your notes. So this is just two ways that you can use a mnemonic. One is to get the rest of the information and you have to memorize it. The other is to use it as a keyword to access in another kind of resource. So now let's see how a different role, in this case a developer, can use a different mnemonic. So let's say that as a developer you receive the scenario of, what, of the feature that you want to implement. And while you do it, you want to make sure that your system can handle errors. So a mnemonic that is useful in that situation is the trigger word failure. Once again, each letter will be the initial of a different word. This mnemonic is slightly different because each word will then trigger a few questions, questions important um, to think about when you want to deal with errors. So let's proceed with the example. So the first letter is F of functional. So the question here is, do we have an error detection in place? Is it functioning? Uh, also, if the users find some unexpected behavior, can they report uh, that as an error? After we detect, are we communicating the error to the appropriate audience? Do they have enough knowledge or permissions to react to that exception? 
do we have logs in place? Do they have enough detail? Are they helpful when we're debugging issues? What is the impact that these errors have on our users? Does the system fail as soon as possible or is only after, they, after the user did a, a big chunk of work that the system is going to fail and they're going to lose the whole work? When the exception occurs, do we provide a message that is easy to understand from the point of view of the user or is it too technical? Do we give the user the option to recover from that error? Is it easy enough for them to understand how to proceed? And finally, what are the emotions that they feel when they get one of these errors? Uh, will they just be annoyed? Are they going to be frustrated? Are they going to be angry and demand a refund? So as you can see, all these uh, aspects are important to think about when we want to um, make sure that our system can handle errors. To make it easier for you to remember all of them, that's why this mnemonic called failure was created. So now for our final example, let's assume that we are a tester. So we got our feature, it was implemented by the developer, and now as a tester, we want to do some exploratory testing. This usually has two phases. In the first one, you prepare your session, and after you do it, then you do a debrief and share it with the team. So this particular mnemonic is useful at the second phase, when you already did the session and you want to share with your team what you learned. So the mnemonic is proof, which is very intuitive because it's what you bring after some exploration, you bring proof. So once again, let's start with the first letter, which stands for past. This is a short summary of what was your focus during that exploration and also what kind of interactions you did with your application. Then you have the outlooks. This is um, test ideas for the next session all those areas that you didn't have time to explore, but also new ideas for testing that you discovered while you were doing the exploration. Then you have the obstacles. This can be anything that made your testing take longer or something that prevented you from testing as deep as you wanted. So you can think of these obstacles as lessons learned for the next session because if you're able to mitigate them in your next session, then you'll be able to uh, test more in less time. Then you have the results. This is probably what your team will be most interested in. This is all the information, new information, that you discovered during your exploration. And finally, you have the feelings, which is the emotions that you felt while you were doing the, that session. This is very important because this is information or feedback that you only get when you explore it and no automation will be able to give you this. And as a, as a tester, if you felt something like um, if you felt frustrated or confused or if you were really engaged while interacting with the application, this is all valuable feedback because if as a tester you felt it, it's very likely that the users will also feel it. So that's why this feedback is so important to share with your team. So that's it. We saw how we can use three different um, mnemonics in three different situations of different roles in your team, product owner, developer, and the tester. There are also, of course, more mnemonics that you can learn about. This is just a, a short list of all the, of the most popular mnemonics that there are. And another thing that I would like to highlight is someone had to create these mnemonics. They didn't exist. So this is just to let you know that you are free to create your own mnemonics. Maybe even adapt one of these to something that is easier for you to recall because that's the goal of a mnemonic. It's for you to retrieve some information from your memory with less effort. So feel free to adapt them or create your own. Think about in your work routine, if there is any information that you need to recall constantly or something that you keep forgetting, that might be a good candidate for you to create your own mnemonic. So that's all that I had to share with you. Just to recap, we started with the definition of a mnemonic. Then I gave you a few examples of how different roles in your team can use mnemonics in different situations. And if you got interested and you want to learn more, like if you want to know in detail how those mnemonics in the previous slides work, then you can go to this website, diognunj.com slash testing. You'll see all those um, mnemonics listed there together with their authors and how you can use them. 
So thanks for listening. And once again, if you want to learn more about testing, you can go to that link. And if you have any questions or if you have any feedback that you would like to share with me, I'm available at Twitter. So just tweet me there. Thanks for listening. Oh,